Bonjour, good day. I'll just have a quick opening comment and then I will take your questions. I want to begin by just expressing my, my deep condolences to those impacted, those injured, potential fatalities, in the incident that's happened uh, very recently on the Rainbow Bridge, the crossing between Canada and the US. I want to thank the first responders for their work. And uh, again, I want to ensure that Canada is doing everything we can to provide assistance and support both in the investigation and uh, to those that are impacted. In addition, uh, I just want to take a moment to reflect on the fall economic statement. I think a lot of people felt disappointed and felt let down because the government seemed to have acknowledged that the housing crisis is serious, but has not taken it seriously in the fall economic statement where most of the measures are put off to the, to the distance. I think about young people and how they are struggling to find a place they can afford, struggling with rent. And I think about the fact that most of the measures for affordable homes aren't going to start until at least two years from now. And the fact that on the same day of the fall economic statement, the Prime Minister had a fundraiser where he charged $1,700 per person to attend. And I don't think he would have allowed people to come into that event and say, we'll pay you in two years. They wouldn't have been allowed in. How does he think it's okay to tell young people to wait two years before they even start to to build homes that are actually affordable for young people and, all, and others. And just in French, and then I'll take your questions. Donc, je veux commencer en parlant de la, de la situation um, sur le pont. Uh, premièrement, je veux, je veux remercier les, uh, les, uh, les respondeurs uh, de l'urgence et, et pour leur travail. Je veux aussi uh, partager mes condoléances pour les gens qui sont blessés potentiellement uh, les, 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 uh, les morts. Uh, C'est une situation tellement inquiétante et je veux que le Canada fasse tout le travail nécessaire pour travailler ensemble avec les États-Unis pour encadrer les situations et appuyer les gens qui étaient impactés par tout ça. Uh, et puis, je veux prendre un moment de parler de la mise à jour économique de l'automne. Uh, je pense que les gens étaient frustrés par uh, les délais encore du gouvernement libéral parce qu'on sait qu'on est dans une crise du logement, mais la grande majorité des actions pour construire du logement abordable vont commencer en deux ans. Et ce n'est pas la réponse nécessaire pour l'urgence de la crise. Et c'est quelque chose qu'on va continuer de mettre la pression sur le gouvernement, de dire qu'on doit agir dès maintenant pour construire du logement abordable. With that, I'm ready for your questions. Did you receive a briefing on what happened at the Rainbow Bridge today? I've not received a briefing uh, yet, but I, I, will, uh, I, I would like to have a briefing. And I, again, my, my thoughts are with uh, those that are impacted, the first responders, and the community, and those injured, and those that uh, potentially might have been, uh, who may be casualties, those who've lost their lives as well. It was shocking. It was inquietant. I think that de la réalité pour plusieurs euh, Canadiens et des gens des États-Unis qui utilisent les, les ponts. J'étais euh, dans mon enfance, j'ai habité, j'ai vécu à Windsor et c'était vraiment normal de croiser les frontières souvent. Donc, euh, je pense que euh, toute les, la communauté qui était impactée et les familles impactées, donc c'est quelque chose qui est vraiment inquiétant. Non, euh, je n'ai pas reçu une... Euh, une, une mise à jour de la sécurité ou une update, euh, euh, mais je suis, euh, je veux avoir euh, euh, cette update euh, aussitôt que possible. Oh, Est-ce que, est que vous craignez un resserrement des mesures de sécurité? Déjà que la frontière, oh. il y a beaucoup plus de sécurité qu'il y en avait avant le, des attentats du 11 septembre 2001. Est-ce que vous craignez que la sécurité s'épaississe se, encore plus? C'est toujours un équilibre entre la sécurité et euh, les droits de la personne. C'est un, équil un équilibre important. Euh, mais dans ce cas, la, mes premières pensées sont on doit aider avec l'enquête, on doit euh, aider les gens qui étaient impactés et puis on doit évaluer ce qu'on peut faire pour éviter ce sorte d'incident euh, pour le futur. Do you have any reaction to that? Well, we've, we've already seen that uh, in Canada, there is, there is clear intelligence that the Prime Minister shared 
that a Canadian was killed on Canadian soil and the intelligence links that to the Indian government. We have condemned that in the harshest and, and the most severe terms. This is a serious affront to the sovereignty of Canada and there should be the most severe consequences for everyone responsible in this matter. There should be prosecutions and the full weight of Canadian law should be applied uh, to those that were responsible. To see that there's another incident where the United States was able to thwart something again with suggestions that the Indian government was involved, again raises some deep concerns about India's lack of respect for human rights, for the sovereignty of other nations, and really calls into question whether or not this is a nation that truly respects democracy or the rule of law with these types of uh, incidents and intelligence coming forward, I think that is really so seriously put into question. I do want to emphasize this is a critique of the Indian government, of the Modi government, and not a critique of the people. This is very much uh, directed towards the Indian government, who's long had a serious problem with human rights and violating those human rights. How will you vote on the fall economic statement? Well, it depends on what is brought forward. There isn't a vote on the fall economic statement uh, as a, a statement. Uh, there will be votes on different measures. If there's any measures, I've said, that will support Canadians, measures that will introduce affordability, measures that make grocery prices more affordable, bring down grocery prices, those are things, of course, we'll support. And we'll look to see what the government actually brings forward. That definitely needed to go through, uh, through the legislative process was the removing the tax on the therapy and counseling services. Is there anything you know? You, seems like it, pretty straightforward. Is it something you oppose or support? Well, we in fact have a bill on that very matter. Lindsay Matheson, one of our members of parliament, introduced as a private members bill the exact same idea that for mental health services, counseling, therapy, that the GSD should be removed. This has been a long time ask of the community of those who provide those services. Something, of course, we would support. How Mr. close are you and the Liberals to finding enough common ground on pharmacare to get that legislation moving? The, those discussions are ongoing. We believe that, that Canadians deserve to have a healthcare system that includes medication coverage, and we want to lay the foundation for that to happen. That is something we fought for, and we want to see that happen. The neg those negotiations are continuing, and we remain optimistic. Uh, we, we also remain very firm in our commitment to something that's universal. When you talk, when you talk, Mr. Singh, when you talk about, Good to see you. hi, thanks, nice to see you too. Um, when you talk about negotiations, are you talking about negotiations on the the actual bill? Uh, a bill was sent back. The NDP didn't like it. You sent it away. What what's the status of the actual bill? So yeah, there was a first draft, and that first draft was not acceptable to us. We sent that back and said it has to be better. And now we're in negotiation to to have that that better language, uh, and those negotiations are ongoing. We, again, remain hopeful, remain optimistic. We have made very firm that we believe in a universal pharmacare that covers all Canadians. And so far, the Liberals, uh, their initial position was one that really favoured big insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies, which we disagree with. We want a bill that supports families, workers, Canadians, not these big enterprises. The stipulation, though, Mr. Singh, the stipulation... One follow-up, and then we'll go to The stipulation, oh, Mr. Singh, just... Last question. Sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was just going to say, the stipulation is I'll that... i do it in French as well. Okay. That legislation would be passed by... Pharmacare legislation would be passed by the end of the year. Um, it is the end of November. There is no... There's no bill that's been tabled, so it seems as though at least the spirit of the agreement between the NDP and the Liberals will, will not actually be met. You came back from Hamilton and said, this is a red line, so, you know, sh should, should people believe you on that? And, um, you know, are, are you upset that the legislation isn't going to be passed by the end of the year? Um, it doesn't seem like any magician could get that done between now and, and January. Well, after convention, we got a strong... Um we got a strong mandate from the party that we could fight hard, that we had a strong support to push the government on making sure that we had legislation that supports the spirit of having medication coverage for all Canadians. So we are using that as our leverage to say, we've got the full mandate from our party. We've been using that to negotiate something that's gonna be good for Canadians, and we're confident we can move forward with it. Uh, we are more interested in making sure we do this right, and so far we're moving in the right direction, but we're gonna, we're gonna remain resolute and firm on that protection of Canadians, and I'll just do that in French. Est-ce que vous avez fait des pas vers un compromis sur l'assurance médicaments, et si oui, lesquels? Uh, on est on est dans les négociations, donc les, les négociations continuent. 
on était clair que ce qu'on veut voir, c'est une assurance médicaments universelle qui, qui aide les gens. Les libéraux ont voulu faire quelque chose qui aide les grandes entreprises d'assurance et pharmaceutiques. On n'était pas euh, d'accord avec ça. Donc, on continue de se battre pour les gens et on reste optimiste qu'on peut arriver à quelque chose de positif. Merci beaucoup. Merci. 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 Merci